it's a beautiful day quite windy though but I wasted half of it by slipping in so let's start this is where we left off from last week I was trying to decide how to lay out the area and it was predicating mainly on this stump that you see here but I believe it would be a lot easier to work on this if this whole area was clean so I'm going to spend a good part of the day removing all of these plants that would give me a better view and I could better decide what to do here that in turn would tell me how much materials I would need I've been calling this space the overflow area and this is right across another area which I call the area of neglect. So as you can tell from the name, right here I place everything that I have excess of. So anytime I make cuttings or if I chop or propagate, I just stick them here. And you'll see that all of them are doing really well, so well that they, are, they have taken over the area. I'd like to be able to reorganize this part and that's the main motivation behind creating the planters. Right now, there's no method to this madness. I just stick stuff whenever I see space in the ground. But apart from that, I also want to have a proper space for my propagations because right now, they are just all over the place. An unfortunate consequence of that is I am not actively monitoring all of them. I just tend to linger in one area. So by placing all of them in a single spot right here, that would mean that I, I would have an easier time monitoring them and checking on them and no plant will be overlooked. At least that's a theory. Let's start cleaning. I'm starting with these pink plants right here. These are Graptoviria Douglas Huff and I have lots and lots of cuttings. The Douglas Huth is a hybrid, an intergeneric hybrid based on the Graptopetalum paraguayense and anything with paraguayense in it means that the leaves come off easily. Now these ones are the Graptophytum supreme. This is an intergeneric hybrid between a Graptopetalum and a Pachyphytum, hence the name. Again, the Paraguayense influence on this means that the leaves fall off easily. But on the upside, they propagate easily as well. Lucky for me, most of them are already in pots, so there's less work for me. For the rest of them, I'll need to place them in a container temporarily. My Aeonium Smithy is alive. So happy. I've got an Aeonium Tabul Deforme, a plate plant. It's one of my favorites. We got some Portulacaria afra here. Several cuttings. I've kept them in pots because I don't want them to be so big and out of control. And they can be quite big here in Melbourne. Yeah. This one here is a Crashula bluebird. One of my favorite fillers. Crashula tetragona. Just moving it out of the way. Next up is this Crashula arborescence subspecies Angulatifolia and it gets the name in the shape of the leaves. As you can see, the edges are wavy and that's what undulate means. I've got lots more over there. This is one of the larger cuttings that I stuck in here. It's time for them to go. Ooh. 
Tapos may Oreo. Iyon yung Oreo. More popular ni known previously known as Grenovia. Yeah, it's alive. I like using these plants for fillers. Cuz the texture, texture of the leaves, the waves, they make really nice complement to the other plants. What I'm doing right now is placing them in pots. You don't have to plant them properly right now, especially since this is just temporary. At most, maybe they'll be staying here for a couple of days or three days. They'll survive. This is an Aeonium David Bramwelli. And as you can see, it has reverted from the variegated state. So it's just a plain David Bramwelli. Now here's a David Bramwelli that's partially variegated. It has its own pop. This form is called the Starburst. With the Starburst, the markings are at the center of the leaves. The fully variegated version would be the sunburst, and with the sunburst, the markings would be at the opposite, at the ends, at the margins of the leaf. So that's how you tell them apart. Now, the remaining plants that you see here are either forms or hybrids or variations, cultivars of the Aeonium arboreum, except maybe for this one and this one, I guess. Right now, in their growing season, they are looking a bit similar because they all have the rosettes wide open and some of them have even reverted to green. That's pretty normal during growing season. They actively grow during the cooler months, which means in my case, that would be autumn and winter. So if you plan to do any propagations or choppings, this is the best time to do it because each cutting will take and they would grow all of these offsets. Back when I planted them here, there was, they only had a few offsets on them. But now you can see there's a very thick growth. They form bushes already. This is probably a blushing beauty, a sister seedling to the Veloras, they have the same parents. All I have to do is to relocate the pelargoniums and imbricata and clear out the weeds and we're done. If you're in Australia, these are still for sale, so let me know. These ones are not seeing enough sunlight because they've been right at this fence and they've been overrun by the weeds. So I need to give them some exposure so they would look more compact just the way I like it. Before I move them wherever, it's always a good idea to clean them up while I have easy access to them. By removing the dead leaves, that ensures that there's more airflow underneath and make them less likely to succumb to fungal rot. All we have left are the weeds. Should be easy. Now that this spot is clear, we can finally mark our work area. I'm going to use twine to mark out the area that I'm going to enclose. I've got some sticks here and be driving to the ground. What I did was to mark out 4.8 meters along the fence, give or take. I gave a bit of allowance because that way I could use joiners in between. Because the timber planks come in 2.4 meters, there's no way I could have a single piece of plank along here. So I'll have to join two. Right, Nikki? Now that I know the length, the maximum length that I can have, I just need to work out the space and the clearance that I would need to do to avoid that stump and the rest will follow. 
we'll see. So from the string to the stump, I've got about 700, 700 millimeters to this part. And I was originally thinking of using just 500, which is about this width. On second thought, I think I'll go with 60 centimeters or 600 millimeters. That way I can split a single plank into four equal parts, each part 60 centimeters. I don't have a square rule, so I'm going to use this piece of board just to get an approximate square or perpendicular 90, 90 degrees. We'll see how it goes. Sixty centimeters is somewhere here. Let's do the same on the other end. I don't need it to be perfect, I just need an approximation. So I'm going with this for now. I think this is a good representation of what I'm going for. And for now, I'm thinking of just going with one layer tallest layer with three planks and develop my technique and once I get the hang of it I could work on other sections along the fence either I create a second tier here or create another planter at the other side with that in mind I would need four corner pieces two joiner pieces and 4.8 point eight plus 1.2 I would need six meters of sleepers. It's getting dark now, it's almost 5 p.m. so let's go back inside and do the calculations. Okay, now we're back to my computer. As you can see right now I'm actually working on the poster, the thumbnail for my video and I've been spending, I've spent a few hours for, so far on this I've been thinking a lot about how I would like to represent, best represent a thumbnail and I figured that for this video it would be a good idea to include some of my drawings. I've been sketching mainly inside Photoshop just using the vector tools, the shapes and by no means am I a good artist. I'm, if I were I would be using a better tool, maybe Illustrator or something. I don't know. I don't know what you cool kids use. But anyway, let's make do with what we have. All right, I'm on Photoshop. And what I want to do is to create a sketch of what I intend to do in the backyard. So let's forget about this render for now. Although I did, I did work on something earlier. Uh, this is a sketch, a pseudo 3D sketch of the planter that I intend to do. There are some, if you can see here, there are some markings showing the dimensions that I'm going for. But let's go on ahead and create a new file. I'll go with 1920 by 1080p. Just so I can import it directly to the <laughs> into the video that I'm working on. Oh yeah, if you haven't noticed, I have two screens now. I bought my second screen a few weeks ago because I was having a hard time working at home. Because these days, I work from home for half of my work week since my wife is about done with her maternity leave and has started going back to work. But I digress. So here we have a blank screen and I'm going to work on the plot, so to speak. Let this rectangular shape here represent the backyard. Maybe I should just go with uh, green or black or just plain gray. Yep. There. So we have this. So we have this plot. And what I want to 
no actually I'm going to use the entire screen so take this blank page this blank page is going to represent my backyard so we have the corner top left corner here that would be the northwestern corner that's the edge that's near the tree stump let us draw a shape here Let's just draw a shape here to represent the stump. It should be the tree stump here. And I'm going to build my plot over this area. Let's move both of them to the center just to make things easier to work on. So here, this is starting to look like a Patreon logo. Wink, wink. <laughs> anyway. What I was thinking here was to just go with one tier, one level for now. Doing it this way means that this is my practice run. I'm going to perfect my method with this large planter first. Oops, sorry. Yes, with this large planter first. And I'm going to make, I'm going to use the entire stretch of the available space. Based on my measurements, I've got about 4.8 meters. For the entire length of the fence on the longer side and I've got about 0.6 well actually I was originally thinking of half a meter for the length for the width but considering that the planks the timber planks come in 2.4 meters I could divide it into four and I would have 0.6 meter slabs and that would be perfect because I would be using the entire length of, of, the, of the sleeper without any wastage. And I did mention that I'm all about efficiency. I want to make the most out of the material, so perfect. Again, this is a 4.8 length, which is exactly twice the length of the timber sleeper, 2.4. So I'm going to use two timber sleepers here. So based on this diagram, I would need four, four retaining corners, retaining uprights. One would be here, another here, another here, and finally here, four corners. And apart from that, since I have 2.4 meters of the sleeper timber, I would need to join two of them on this side. Which, which means I would need to get two of the steel joiners and based on this diagram so far you would see that I would need one, two, three, four, four pieces of the 2.4 timber sleepers and one, two, that's 1.2 that's two pieces of the 0.6 meter sleepers or a half of a single slab as you recall I'm going for the 1100 centimeter retaining upright that means I, I can stack three levels three layers of the sleepers and right now this is what I would need so far and if we multiply this by three layers and that means that I would need 12 pieces of the 2.4 meter slabs and six pieces of the of the 0.6 meter slab and as you know six pieces of 0.6 means 1.5 of 2.4 meters so in total I would need about 13.5 of the 2.4 meter sleeper logs I'm going to round that off to 14 and use the extras for whatever purpose I will need. I don't know yet, but I might need it. So after doing the maths, I would need 14 pieces of the sleepers, and that would be a total of $170. Ouch! <laughs> Four of the corners at 50.99 each, that means a total of 203, 204. Two joiners, that's about $97.28 and a grand total of 472 almost half a grand <sighs> yikes but I've been saving up for it or at least I've already got most of that saved the rest I'm I'll have to dig into my personal savings this tells me I need to sell more plants man 
Oh well, spring's around the corner. I'll make up for it by then. Thank you so much for my Patreon supporters, that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Minotti, Camille Narvaez, Tom, Linda, and everyone else. Especially this one supporter who prefers to remain anonymous. Your contributions help me fund projects like these, so all your help is very much appreciated. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider hitting the like button and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on the next episodes because the next episode will be a direct continuation to this and in that episode I'll be showing you the actual building of that raised bed. Let's Plant comes out every Tuesday morning my time that would be Monday evening at the other side of the world EST and I also put out a recap video Saturday night which should be Saturday morning at the other side of the world. And lastly, if you're on Instagram, please check out Series Capades. I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye, Nikki.